Hey y'all, how's everyone doing? Well, I just did a makeup video over on my other channel, Beth Buchanan, Bible Beauty Fashion and Fun, and this is my strictly devotional Bible study, y'all. I gotta show you how cute my dog is. I'm gonna turn this around. Hold on. Is Velvet there? Velvet, where are you? Hold on, I have to show y'all. There she is. She's over in front of the window. Velvet! Why are you not looking? There she is. <laughs> She's over in front of the window. Okay, sorry y'all. Uh, there we go. Let me get us, let us get back together here. Okay. Y'all, I'm in love with my dogs. Are y'all like that? Are y'all in love with your dogs? Okay. So, I want to talk to you about the Word of God. And, um, I had someone this week who was asking me about wisdom, the wisdom of God, and that they didn't really trust the wisdom of God. And I'm like, <laughs> If there, I'm sorry, I'm not making fun, but I do have to laugh. If there is someone you could trust about wisdom, it would be God. So, um, I think what they were really dealing with was um, hurtness. And it had destroyed their joy. And so I have some thoughts today about joy in the midst of heartache. That may be you. I know it's been me sometime. I mean, there's been some time where I'm like, Lord, really? I mean, really? Seeing all the struggling and suffering of people through the hurricanes that have come through Florida and North Carolinas, and not just them, Georgia, other places that were affected, but substantial level of suffering. It reminds me of Hawaii when they burned, and the substantial level of suffering, and how it was so quickly forgotten. Because we have the next storm, or the next political storm, or the next personal storm. And we forgot it like that. And the news forgot it like that. And it's like, those people are still suffering. And you can still give, you can still help. But you wonder, is my money going where it should go? Can I tell you something about that? Sort of like the homeless person that comes up to your car. And you give them $5 or $10 out the window. And people say, you shouldn't give them that because they just can use that for alcohol. You don't worry about what they're going to use it for. You worry about your heart and what God calls you to do. And if you are to help them. I've known some friends. When I worked at Coca-Cola, I had a guy that he came in every day in this beautiful suit. But I did start noticing it looked a little dingy. And we were talking one day and he said something about the fact that he was homeless. And I'm like, what? You're homeless? And he said, yes, I'm sleeping in the parking lot, the parking decks, in the same suit. And every day I come in because we did have showers, like a gym there, and you could go there. He would shower, so the suit was okay, in that, you know, he would shower and get freshened up there because they had shampoo, conditioner, deodorant, hairspray, everything in there. Thank God. And at Chick-fil-A, they had that uh, at the home office. And that's how he was surviving. Broke my heart. And I was like, okay. Don't question when someone needs some help that, yes, you should give it. If they use it wrongly, that's up to them. I had a girlfriend that she found out she had cancer, and we raised all this money, and she went out to California and purchased all these beautiful clothes. She had less than a month to live. And I remember thinking, that's what you're going to do with that money? And then I thought, Beth, you've never been in that circumstance. Maybe for once in her life, she just wanted to do that. She just wanted to look awesome feel awesome. And I'm like, but she has this eight-year-old son she has to worry about. You know what? I've never been in her shoes. Be careful of judging others when you're not in their place and you say, I wouldn't do that, but you don't know what you would do when you comment below if you feel that way that you have seen where someone thought they'd do one thing, but in this circumstance, even if it's you, they did something else. It may not be as honorable as you thought you'd be. It may not be as uh, godly as you thought you'd be. But can I tell you something? Sometimes we're not the best we should be. Don't beat yourself up. That is why Jesus died on the cross. That is why he says, I love you with an everlasting love. Come to me. He understands 
Remember, he is both God and man. He has lived as a man. He knows how tough it is. And I have another friend who she's just like, God can't understand how I feel as, as a woman because he's a man. I used to think that. I remember when I was a teenager dealing with my uh, period, I had substantially worse cramps than all the girls I knew. Turns out I had an over overproduction of prostaglandins, which they ended up fixing with a leave. But then they found a leave has all these side effects. So it's like... Okay, bottom line is I used it because I had such bad cramps. And I remembered thinking nobody understands, especially Jesus. He never had a cramp. And I was like, God, you don't know what it likes you don't know what it's like to push out a baby. You don't know what it's like to have a cramp. You don't know what it's like to deal with a menstrual period and all the junk that goes with it. And he said, I died on the cross. You ever died on a Roman cross? Where they first beat you with 39 lashes. The reason they changed it from 39 to from 40 is because it would kill a person to be beat that much. So they had to reduce it by one. People still died. He had to have nails put through him. He had to put roping through him. He was, uh, they, they performed the king's game on him, which is despicable. It's not worth going into. It was very nasty. And he went through all that. That's nothing compared to the fact that he took on all our sins on the cross. I don't think we can even understand that or compare it to anything we've ever been through. Because that's what God, the Father, required for the remission of sin. So it's like, look, somebody's got to pay for that sin. And God said, you know what, I'll come to the earth, I'll pay for the sin, because I love him so much. Don't ever question God's love for you, or his power. Oh, Velvet, I'm sorry. I got so over -route. Velvet's now upset. Velvet, it's okay. Did I upset you? Velvet, y'all, she's got older, and she's in her little diapers now. Look at these pretty cute little pink diapers she's in. She has to have diapers in the house now, because she's having little accidents. Hmm. I didn't mean to beat the Bible. I was a Bible beater. A Bible thumper. It's okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> Did I scare y'all? <laughs> sorry. I'm about to drop my Bibles. Okay. So here's some scriptures for you. Psalm 21, 6. It says, Surely you have granted him eternal blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. In Proverbs 2, 4, it says, And if you look for... Uh, it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure. Well, what's it talking about? Um, this is basically talking about that no matter what you're going through, you can find joy in the very presence of God. Matter of fact, with what you're going through, odds are you will have no joy without allowing yourself to feel the presence of God. Um... Some days are great, right? Some days we have great days. Other days are just very not so great. They're, they're uh, what the Bible talks about is uh, great, overcast, dull. Um, and that joy is still attainable, but you have to look for it like you're looking for a treasure. And that's what that scripture in Proverbs 2, 4 says. So maybe write that out in your scripture writing Notebook. I wonder y'all still keeping script writing notebooks. You know, the first time that I uh, started doing that was when I was very, very young. But as I got older, I forgot about it. And it was Cherie McGinnis here on YouTube that taught me to go back to doing scripture writing. And because uh, she does that a lot on her channel. Y'all, I'll link her below. I absolutely love her. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely link her. But scripture writing is just, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. It's just writing out scripture. And when you're writing it, you're thinking about it. Uh, you're memorizing it, and then you go back to that little notebook throughout the week, and you memorize it more. And when you keep the Word of God on your heart and mind, when you're thinking, what do I do? Well, the Lord brings Scripture to your remembrance, and He tells you what to do. That's how we know what to do. Um, but it's important to realize the companionship of God in our lives. That's, that's what I really want to point out. Some of you have been through enough hell on earth. Uh, I know a couple of you have mentioned that you have been through sexual molestation. You have been through uh, uh, abuse by a, a father or a brother or a mother or other people in your life. And 
That is horrific. It is horrible. But the peace of God transcends all understanding that I can't even express to you that if you will let him be in your mind, in your presence, he can give you joy in the midst of heartache. Um, and you know what? I feel like that's where I'm going to leave it today. I feel that's where, that's where I'm going to leave it today. My friend Pammy said you can keep it simple, and I'm going to keep it simple. Again, I apologize to you guys for when I have not kept up with a structured Bible study. Maybe that's not for me. I feel like come first of the year, I'm going to try to walk through the Bible again. Let's be praying about that together. It's a huge commitment for the teacher, or well, I don't know what you call me, a um, facilitator, as it is for people who are doing it together, including me. So, anyway, let's pray about that, about what we're going to do come January 2025. We need to be in the Word of God. And here's the important thing. Being in the Word of God is so critical, especially for your memorization, to know it, to know these are the thoughts and, and words of God so that when you wonder, what would God tell us to do? What do I do? It's like, his word is his, is what he would say. It's what he would do. So we do need to know it. We need to know it so that when we have things come up in life, God will speak it to us. I've even had times in my life, and I'm not kidding about this, where a scripture came to my mind that I had never read before, that I had not memorized. And God was speaking to me through his scripture saying, this is what you will do. And also, there's a scripture that tells us that he will be right behind us and whisper in our ear, this is my way, walk in it, walk in it, walk in it. And we have to learn, besides talking about it, how to walk. Walk in it. It's easier said than done. We all know that. But it's, it's the only way you're going to have joy in the midst of heartache. So I love you guys. I hope that helps you. I've missed you. And I hope you've missed me. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye, 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 bye.